Hey guys, welcome back for another extreme clean and true crime story time. I'm so glad that you guys enjoyed the first video in this series last Wednesday, and I can't wait to tell you another story today. So today we're going to be decluttering my disaster of a dresser, as you can see, um, while I tell you the story of Suzanne Morphew. This case is actually still ongoing. There was an arrest made recently in this case. Um, so yeah, it's an interesting one. Let's go ahead and get started. So Suzanne Renee Mormon was born on April 30th, 1971. She had a sister named Melinda, whom she actually shared a birthday with. And Melinda always thought of Suzanne as her 15th birthday present. She also had two brothers growing up. She was described as an intelligent, genuine, beautiful young woman. She could light up a room and she was known around town for her positivity. She also sang in the choir in high school and was said to have a beautiful singing voice and an amazing stage presence. Suzanne met her soulmate, Barry Morphew, in 1988. It was love at first sight, apparently, for both Suzanne and Barry. Um, they both placed a lot of value on the importance of faith in their lives, and it just seemed like they were a perfect match for each other because they both placed such a heavy value on this, and they got along so well. So they dated for a few years, and then they were married on August 6th, 1994, when Suzanne was just 23 years old, and they got married at Grace Baptist Church in Anderson, Indiana. Suzanne had attended Purdue University, where she got a degree in education, and Barry had also attended Purdue University, where he got a degree in horticulture production. Suzanne actually worked as a teacher in Indiana for about four years um, before she left to become a stay-at-home mom, and Barry used his degree from Purdue to start a business, a landscaping business, which he named BLM Landscaping. So this company obviously became the livelihood of the family. Barry worked and Suzanne stayed at home with their two daughters who were named Mallory and Macy. Suzanne thrived as a mother. Everyone who knew the family states that Suzanne was a very loving, attentive mother who enjoyed spending time with her daughters and teaching them about Christ. And Barry seemed to be a good husband and father as well. People that knew them in Indiana did not suspect that anything was other than perfect. Suzanne had a heart for helping others, especially children. So in 2014, she started a nonprofit organization called the Suzanne R. Morphew Hope Foundation. The purpose of the foundation was to teach as many children as possible about the love of Jesus Christ and therefore help them to discover and learn and thrive in a faith-based environment. Suzanne really found a purpose in this nonprofit and felt like she was making great headway in Indiana. However, in May of 2018, they decided that it was time to move out of Indiana and they listed their house for sale. They ended up deciding that Colorado would be where they resettled and they bought a beautiful $1.6 million home in Salida, Colorado in April 2019. This home was gorgeous. It had gorgeous view of the mountains and the Morphe family had tons of access to different hiking and biking trails right from their very own property, which was great because Suzanne loved to go biking. The family settled in easily in Colorado. Barry continued his landscaping business and Suzanne quickly joined a new church and became a volunteer of the church, helping out the youth. Um, she would make lunch for the youth group, pretty much do anything that she could to help out. And the girls seemed to adjust well to their new home also. They quickly fell into a new friend circle. And before long, the Morphe family fit right in with their new little tight-knit community. And this is exactly what Salida was, tight-knit. So this takes us to Mother's Day 2020, which we all know what was happening around that time. Um, so this year, Mother's Day was on Sunday, May the 10th. And that weekend, Macy and Mallory had actually planned a camping trip together but were planning to return home early Sunday morning so that they could spend Mother's Day with their mom. Um, so because of this, Barry had decided to go to Denver, which was about a three hour drive to do some work. 
Him and his team were preparing a new work site that was expected to begin construction that following Monday. So Barry apparently had cleared with Suzanne that he was going to go do some work on this day. And friends and family all have said that this is true, that this that Suzanne did clear this with, with Barry. Um, the only thing that was odd about this is that Barry did not typically work on the weekends, but apparently he had cleared it with Suzanne, so, you know. So that morning, May 10th, it is presumed that Suzanne would have gone out for her usual Sunday morning bike ride. The girls had ended up texting her early that morning, letting her know that they would be later than they had originally planned, um, and, but they would still be there later in the day, but they actually weren't able to get a hold of her. She never responded to that text. They assumed that she was biking and decided to try again in a while. However, they were never able to get in touch with her on that Sunday. After several hours of trying, the girls reached out to a neighbor and asked if, um, if the neighbor could go over and check on their mother. The neighbor was also not able to locate Suzanne anywhere and at 5.46 p.m. on May 10th, filed a missing persons report with the Chafee County Communications Center. The police were very quick to organize a search for Suzanne. Um, obviously, the, they were located in a very um, populated wildlife area, so they obviously wanted to locate Suzanne as soon as possible to make sure that she was okay. So within a few short hours, um, they had dogs and drones deployed on the trails surrounding the Morphew house. At that time, she was believed to have disappeared near County Road 225 and West Highway 50. Um, so Barry was, as we know, 140 miles away in Denver. He was notified that Suzanne had disappeared and he made it back around 9 p.m. that Sunday night. He, from the very beginning, was very adamant that he believed Suzanne had been dragged away by a wild animal. This isn't unheard of, obviously, in Colorado, but... <sighs> There wasn't any blood or anything left behind or anything that would suggest an animal attack. And the dogs actually did not pick up any scent of any like animal or of Suzanne or anything on that first night. So the animal attack theory just quickly fizzled out, but Barry would not let it go. He was very adamant that he believed that is where Suzanne went. So they called off the search that night, like when it just wasn't safe to be out there searching anymore and resumed it the very next morning. So this was May 11th, 2020. And at this time, a major clue was found that was not seen the night before. So police found Suzanne's bike at the bottom of a hill, very close to her home. They had searched this same area the night before and the bike was not there. And it had very minimal damage to the bike. It just didn't make sense that it would have been here that whole time when they had searched that area. They had the dogs out there and everything the night before. So Barry was present when the bike was found and he expressed frustration with police about how the bike was handled. He thought the, that the bike was handled carelessly and therefore important evidence could have been destroyed like fingerprints and stuff like that. <sighs> So during these first few days, Barry was participating a lot in the search for his wife. He was out in the woods looking with the searchers, speaking with businesses about posting flyers, et cetera, et cetera. But some say that he was just doing the minimal work, like enough to play the part of the grieving husband, but not enough to like, I don't know, go the extra mile and really look like he was trying to find her. One store manager claims that Barry gave her this description of Suzanne baby blue bike helmet biker's clothing and that's all the note said she found it very odd that he didn't describe like her physical appearance at all um and wanted her to just hang the sign in the window that like that's all it said not even her name but it wasn't only this wasn't the only way that barry was acting odd on may 14th so four days after her Suzanne went missing. Barry came out publicly saying that he believed Suzanne had been kidnapped. So he switched from the bear attack to being kidnapped. And he offered a $100,000 reward, which a friend then matched for her safe return. 
Barry's theory seemed to change right after her bike was discovered, and by now, Barry was starting to get a lot of media attention, and the police were starting to have their own thoughts about Barry. So instead of speaking to every media outlet that wanted an interview with him, Barry just decided to post a very emotional video to his Facebook page where he pleaded for anyone who knew anything to come forward. No questions asked. He just wanted Suzanne back. He's like crying in this video. It's, it's a lot. You can, you can find it online. Um, so on May 19th, nine days after Suzanne went missing, the Morphew house was searched for the first time. Police have kept a lot of this investigation close to them. Like they don't release a ton of information about this case at all. And this greatly frustrates this this close community. Um, the police, so the police didn't release anything about this search as either. They were seen carrying some evidence bags out of the home. Um, so they must have found something, obviously, if they took some stuff out, but they never said what they found or came out and really said anything about the search at all. Then on May 22nd, so 12 days after Suzanne went missing, police got a tip from a woman in Salida. Um, she lived on the riverfront in Salida who stated that Barry's company had been doing some work on the property next to her. And one night she heard them working in the middle of the night, like 2 a.m. She says that she thought it was like some kids that had broken in and found the keys to the, to the equipment. She just found this odd. So she ended up calling Barry's company and they were like, yeah, no, I don't think that would be possible that kids could find the, the keys, etc." So she ended up reporting it to police and this was enough for investigators to go out and search the property. And it turns out that a fresh layer of concrete had just been poured like within a few days in one area. So they actually tore up the concrete slab, but nothing was found. Or if they did find anything again, they didn't tell us um, or they haven't told the public. So at this point, the investigation seemed to literally go cold, which was really infuriating to the neighbors. They believe they knew more about Barry and Suzanne's relationship and they were calling in with tips. There were a lot of rumors um, going around about Barry, how he could be abusive to Suzanne, that he had a really bad temper. There were even some who said that he had had an affair with one of his employees, although this has never been founded. Um, both Barry and the employee both regret or not regret, both deny any affair. Um, so by the end of August, so this is now a couple of months since Suzanne disappeared and nothing has really been you know, found out there's not been really any hot tips. Nobody's been arrested. Suzanne's brother, Andrew had started organizing an independent search team and he created a GoFundMe to help cover the cost of it. It is thought that by this time, Andrew sort of thought that Barry had something to do with, um, Suzanne's disappearance. So police really start at this time around the fall of 2020, focusing more on Barry. They decided to speak with some of his employees just to get a sense of the type of person that he was. And a few of his employees claim to have been inside the hotel room that Barry was staying at in Denver and said that it smelled strongly of bleach. And he tried to say that he had been in the pool, but the pool actually wasn't open due to COVID. So that didn't make sense. And they also said that there were wet towels everywhere, which like wet, like piles of wet towels all over the floor and the room reeked of bleach. So both of these employees remembered finding that like really odd. So during this time, obviously, Andrew started his independent search and it started on September 24th and hundreds of people had volunteered to come and help. Um, the cadaver dogs that they used literally like the days those searches started picked up a scent on a plot of land owned by the Morphew family um, and police went, were given this tip. They went out there and that is when they stopped sharing. Like nothing else was said about Barry and it wasn't, we didn't hear anything else until 
May of 2021. So a year after Suzanne had went missing and like eight months since we had heard anything else, the police were radio silent that entire eight months. So in May of 2021, all of the sudden, Barry is arrested and charged with first degree murder, attempting to influence a public servant connected to his wife's case and tampering with physical evidence. They still have not released like not even why they arrested Barry or anything that they have on him. Um, and I think that this was mainly because of their daughters. They wanted to protect their daughters because their daughters don't have like the, they wanted to give their daughters a chance to hear the reasons why their dad was being arrested before everybody else finds out. So all of the police records are actually sealed at this time and yeah so the trial is still going on details are being kept private um and of course any man is innocent until proven guilty so can we come out and say barry killed his wife no because we don't even really know you know what they even arrested like what the grounds were that they arrested him i will say that it was taken to court and the judge ruled to seal all the documents related to barry's arrest and the main reason that he claimed to have done this, like I said, was for his daughters. He wanted, or yeah, for Suzanne and Barry's daughters, he wanted them to be able to sit down with police and really, you know, go over why their father was being charged, the evidence against him before they found out with everybody else, which I think was highly respectable of the Colorado Police Department. Like that's how it should be. And so many times, we hear about things the same time family members do, which is just completely unacceptable. So I actually agree with them doing this. But as of this time, Barry has not gone to trial. It is still ongoing, but he has been arrested in the murder of his wife. Um, so what do you guys think about this case? Have you heard about it before? Have you been following this one? I've been following this one. I remember hearing about it last summer and then like nothing. And then all of a sudden started seeing news articles about how Barry had been arrested. But I always kind of had a thought that he was guilty. So I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, let's chat in the comments about your thoughts. It just doesn't seem like police are going any other way. Like they have decided that Barry did it and I feel like for them to have made an arrest and charged him with first degree murder, they must have something good on him. Also, Barry's mansion was sold like two days before he was arrested. He placed it up for sale and it was sold. So now police are having to like go in with these new owners and, and conduct searches and stuff and who knows what's in that house. So. I'm going to be following this case. Let me know if you will be as well. I hope that you enjoyed this case. Again, if you have any case ideas, leave them down below. I would be more than happy. I have a few written down that some people have suggested and I like can get lost in true crime stuff for like days and days. So leave me all the cases below. I do have a good case coming for you guys tomorrow. Um, it's also an ongoing case, but it's one that we are really trying to get some attention for. And there's some, some currently some um, like change.org and like petitions and stuff going for this girl so that the police will do more for finding her. So I will give you guys that case tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. Um, and until then guys, I think I got a lot done in my room here. This makes me feel so much better now that I can actually like pull open my drawers and know where my clothing is. I organized it all by like thing and hung everything up that was supposed to be hung up. I have my donation bag. So I am very excited about the next time I put laundry away because maybe it won't be such a disaster. So, um, yep. Leaving me your cases below. Let me know it, what you want me to clean next. I'm thinking my closet needs a good clean out. So would you guys be interested in seeing a major, major, major declutter of my closet? Let me know. And until then guys, I hope you have a fantastic evening. Um, stay safe. Um, and yeah, I will see you tomorrow with a very special true crime sit down style episode. Bye guys.